Accept the fact that even though you want it, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have it and it doesn't necessarily mean you can have it right now. I'm not saying that there's not power in these things, but I'm saying that there has to be power and patience operating at the same time. And so no matter how long it takes, my feelings are gonna have to get in line with that fact. God's got my back. Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you are all doing well and welcome to another chit chat, get ready with me. Today's one, I can't lie, the makeup's gonna be basic again. Basically, I am just getting ready to record. I'm in my bathroom, I'm in my robe and I'm doing some bulk recording because systems, baby, systems. I said I wanted to be consistent and I needed systems. So one of my systems is going to be bulk recording. Hopefully, one of my New Year's resolutions comes true and I can continue to do this consistently in 2023. But yeah, I'm about to record a couple of videos and so I wanna start off with basic makeup that I can change and switch up as I go from video to video. So, you know, changing the lipstick, changing the eyeshadow so that I can give you different vibes, you know, in the videos. So I'm going to do my base right now with you um, and also show some like, I was gonna say some new products, but it's not true, <laughs> it's, it's false It's false news. Um, I bought another lipstick today in Superdrug, so I'm gonna show you some new products, apparently. Today's conversation is going to be something which came up when I did my community post. Thank you everyone for commenting. When I was asking you um, for suggestions or questions that you had about singleness and making the most of your singleness. And this was basically to talk about fears that we can have or for having fear surrounding being a late bloomer when it comes to relationships and careers and I thought that this was such a, a good topic to talk about because I think a lot of us get to that point at any time whether it's in your 20s in your 30s your 40s when you start to feel like am I behind everyone by the way my hair is a mix of passion twists as faux locks slash it's a bit of a complicated situation, but I'm glad you guys actually like it. Um, but I'm gonna move that one out of my way so that I can get to doing my face. We're still on two foundation kind of vibes. Um, I'm using the L'Oreal True Match. I will, my holy grail, my holy grail. I use the darker one because I got a tan whilst in Jamaica and I'm begging it. I'm really holding on to it. I'm holding on to it till my skin goes pale. I'm a beg and drag that tan but anyways um i thought it was just such a good video suggestion because as much as we you know talk about going blowing and growing and being content discontentment or feeling like you're behind or starting to feel impatient or even fearful about your future is very common and i think the more we talk about things like that the less we feel bad about feeling these kind of bad feelings um because you realize that Girl, you are not the only person going through it. And I have definitely, definitely had feelings of like, I feel like a late bloomer in this area, um, especially when it comes to like relationships and even my career, because I have had quite an unconventional career. So I thought, let me come and draw on those experiences and the things that I have learned on this glowing and growing journey and share that with you because that's what this channel is all about. So my advice for anyone who feels like they're dealing with that fear of being a late bloomer is one, deliver yourself from the spirit of your age mates. I will toot this horn till I die, right? If you don't know what I mean by the spirit of your age mates, I basically mean like, you know, growing up, if you, especially if you're from like a West African household or, you know, I'm sure everyone has their cultural version of this, but like your parents would say things like your age mates are doing this, they're buying houses, they're buying cars, they're getting married, they're having kids, your age mates, your age mates, people who are around your age, you grew up with in your class or whatever, are doing X, Y, Z, what are you doing? And I think I will blame the education system. Um, I think the education system being set up in the way that it is um, for most Western world countries, I'd say like, the fact that when you are this age, you are in this class and as long as you get older, you're gonna be in this class. So it kind of creates this illusion that like, we are all progressing at the same rate and we all have a certain um, level, which we should have achieved by a certain age in regards, of course, to education. So, you know, in year one, everyone who is six years old or however old you are in year one, everyone is that age in this class, right? No one's above that, no one's below that typically. And so I think when we get older, we still have that programmed way of thinking in terms of like when you are 23 or when you are 25, you should have this, you should be at this stage by now. And everyone who is not at that stage is either behind or 
you know, just a, a trailblazer and really ahead and should be admired. Um, when actually everyone is very much at their own rate of growth and they're on their own journey. Like even in school, right, you have people who are like, maybe this is not your time to go to the next class because you're actually struggling. And also it's not even just about struggling or doing better or worse than other people. Actually, maybe this way of monitoring your growth doesn't even work for you because you're a unique individual. And so I think setting the analogy aside, I think it's important for you to remember when it comes to your career, when it comes to the progress of your relationship status, um, it's important to remember that you are your own person and you're going at your own pace. And the more you look at what everyone else is doing and what you think you know, people have achieved or have not achieved by now, the more likely you are to feel as though you are behind or that you need to start playing catch up or that you haven't, you know, or that you are the quote unquote late bloomer. Like even putting that title on yourself, I get why we have it. And I do think it's nice to have it as an idea that like, you know, not every flower blooms and buds at the same time, but even that concept of being late in any regard, I don't think it's helpful because you're just on your own journey. And I do think it's hard when, like I said, even with this, you know, age mates thing, other people are reminding you that you're not where you possibly could be or where you even want to be but it's important for you to remember in your head that comparison is only the thief of joy like it's not going to really bring you much fruitfulness now there is a place for maybe healthy comparison <sighs> There's a place for inspiration, but when it comes to comparison, I don't think it's very helpful, especially if you're already feeling down in the dumps about your progression. So the first thing is, girls, stop thinking about what you should or should not have achieved by this age. Especially as women, we have this kind of binary way of thinking and timeline way of thinking, which is, by this age or by this stage of my life, I should have achieved X, Y, Z. And if I haven't achieved it by this age, if I'm not married by 30, if I haven't bought a house, if I haven't bought a car, then I'm not successful. Um, success is not that black and white. Success is not, you know, easily, it hasn't got a mark scheme to it. When it comes to life, it's not like school. That's the first thing I'd say. Did I just put up two fingers and say, that's the first thing I'd say? Did I go to school? <laughs> We should ask ourselves that. Now, within saying that, now that we've kind of zoomed out of the big picture of what everyone else is doing and we've zoomed in to your life and what you're doing, take the time to analyze your progress. And the reason why I say this is because sis, you know, I'm all about being self-aware and honest with ourselves. I think when we take a step back to review our own progress, we are able to identify A, according to my plans, why am I not where I would like to be? And why am I not where I thought I would be? And this can actually allow you to either be very realistic with yourself or very honest with yourself or actually cultivate some compassion for yourself. It's easy to tell yourself like, oh, I should be here with my relationship. So I should be here with my career by this time. But maybe you face some things in your life which have meant that life has a bit too easy to you, you know? Or maybe there have been some obstacles which you didn't anticipate in that would come in your way whilst you were making your original plans. Maybe you didn't see a pandemic coming. Maybe you didn't see financial struggles in your family coming. Maybe you didn't see that person passing away coming. Maybe you didn't see the abuse that happened to you coming. Do you get what I mean? Most people don't. And so these things that can derail you, whether it's trauma, lack of resources, an unexpected failure, uh, an un unexpected circumstance or strenuating circumstance or um, event that can delay you, Oftentimes when you take a look at your journey and you realize these things have actually happened to me, you start to realize, okay, maybe I should be a bit more patient with myself because, not my speaker turning off, maybe I should be a bit more patient with myself because some things have happened in my life which I did not expect. And that's okay, you know, maybe it looks like it's delayed me, but at least I understand where this delay has come from. But the flip side of that is maybe you'll take time to take inventory of your life and realize you haven't actually used your time well. And I want to be honest about that because we are big girls over here. We can take honesty. We can take honesty with ourselves. And, you know, it's important to be able to look yourself in the mirror and be like, you know what, sis? 
you didn't do everything that you could have. You know, you weren't as productive as you could have been. Maybe you procrastinated a little bit. Maybe you spent a bit more recklessly than you should have. Maybe, you know, you dipped into your savings when you shouldn't have. Um, all of these different things and just being able to have an honest conversation about where you played a part in the delay when it came to your uh, career, especially. Maybe you didn't go and do the course that you should have, or maybe you've only just figured out what it is that you want to be with your life, and maybe you've missed a few deadlines, or you didn't work hard enough at academics, or maybe you know your CV wasn't tight enough. As much as these things are hard, and as much as obviously we don't want to self sabotage over here, as much as we didn't, you know, put our worst foot forward intentionally, sometimes we need to just be honest in reviewing our lives and being like, okay, where could I do better? Where could where could I have potentially drop the ball even if I was given my best to this how do I bump my best up to be better and I think that that's a that's another journey that you then go on when it comes to your growth and your development but it's important to take a step back and say okay where have I potentially got wrong this may unfold in relationships in your relationship status in a different kind of way in terms of analyzing your progress and why you may be behind, you have to be honest with yourself about your approach to dating. You know, have you put yourself out there enough? I know a lot of us were in the comments talking about, well, how, when people say put yourself out there, what do they mean? Girl, I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna find out because I think like dating apps, being outside, letting people you know, you know, I'm single, I'm looking and stuff like that. But girls, if that ain't working, I gotta go and do some market research. I gotta go and do some field work so I could come back with the answers. Um, but anyways, I do think that you have to acknowledge, is there something that I have been doing which may be holding me back? Even in the area of finding, you know, a partner or even going on dates or, you know, flirting with people, whatever it is. And so, yeah, that's the second thing I'd say. Okay, the third thing I would advise is accept the fact that even though you want it, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have it and it doesn't necessarily mean you can have it right now okay timing is important and it comes down to this this idea of seasons right you may not be in the season of your life where you're meant to be having your final most ideal career maybe you're still working towards it maybe just because you want to be high flying or have everything perfectly worked out you don't get it because god's trying to teach you something in the process and also understanding that just because you want a relationship doesn't mean it has to manifest right now i think we've come in we've come to a place in the manifestation i say it i see it i want it shout out to ariana grande but like we've come to a point in that conversation where it's like let's not be unrealistic here and let's not i'm not saying there's not power in the mind there's not power in prayer there's not power in your declared word and you you know setting a vision and writing your goals especially as we go into 2023 i'm not saying that there's not power in these things but i'm saying that there has to be power and patience operating at the same time and so just because you want want something doesn't mean you're going to get it right now just because you've written it down doesn't mean it's going to manifest into reality right now as long as you're taking the steps towards it you're gonna be okay and that brings me to my next point which is baby girl sometimes you gotta be patient <laughs> sometimes you just have to be patient sometimes you have to wait and we don't like that idea and we sometimes take the waiting period as a sign of our inadequacy or our undeservingness but the truth of the matter is if you are putting your hands to the plow if you are sowing the seeds into the ground, if you are doing all the necessary steps that you need to, going to school, going on the dates, making sure that you feel good, making sure that you're outside, if you are doing the necessary things, if you are doing the, the, the personal growth work, if you are doing the professional growth work and things aren't progressing at the speed you want to, it could be that your strategy is perfectly fine. It just requires you to be a bit more patient. And I think that it's funny that young people, particularly people who are in their early 20s are frustrated with their life because there's this illusion that life should be perfect by 25 because social media has presented us with these people with exceptional stories. And I'm not knocking it. Like I think it's absolutely amazing to be 23 and have become a millionaire because of the internet or who, to have invented something and built a unicorn company. I think it's absolutely amazing and it's very much inspiring, but there's a reason why these things are called unicorn stories. You don't really see them that often if they happen at all. And so just because you are presented with these, you know, 
amazing stories, right? It doesn't mean it's necessarily going to happen for you that way. And I think the more we become exposed to these, I wouldn't even say they're unrealistic because obviously it's the reality for somebody, but like these timelines which aren't common and aren't traditional and aren't going to happen for the majority of people, the more we become acquainted with these stories, they become a... There, be there becomes this over-representation of the rate that life is meant to progress at, if that makes sense. Like, you aren't necessarily going to be married by 25 or make a million by 25 or be in your dream tech career by, like, 25. Like, that might not work out for you because that's not how things work out for most people. And I think we have a discomfort in this idea that we are most people, if that makes sense. And this isn't to beat anybody down. This isn't uh, another one of those, you know, spills about your average and you're the common Joe and da, 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 shut up. We aren't talking about that. What we are talking about is the crushing weight of unrealistic timelines <laughs> when it comes to your career and your relationship. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say that's another thing, like administer some more patience and patience is just something the majority of us don't like. Kids don't like it, adults don't like it. We don't like waiting, we don't like it. It makes us feel like we're not a priority. It makes it feel like other people are more important than we are because they get it first. And that's not the case. It's not a case of waiting your turn, it's just waiting for your season to come. And that brings me to my next point, which is it could be that God is trying to do something in you, through you, with you, and not just to give you something. And this is one of the hardest lessons that I've had to learn. And I've noticed it a lot when I watch people like parent somebody, um, well, parent children, which is it's not just about me handing you all the answers on a silver platter. Sometimes I need to teach you the valuable lessons of life, the valuable lessons that will help mature you and grow you spiritually, physically, mentally. Sometimes it's about allowing you to mature by allowing you to go through something that's unconventional or that wasn't according to your expectations or in a simple term, that isn't easy. When it comes down to your career development, when it comes down to your relationship, when it comes down to even being single, you're going to be faced with different kinds of challenges which are going to cause your character to develop. They're going to have to cause you to grow, you know, whether that's cultivating patience in you, whether that's cultivating, you know, a sense of community and servitude, um, whether that's allowing you to put boundaries in place, whether that's teaching you to just have more faith and more dependence on God, teaching you to become more organized, teaching you to expand your mind, to go and learn more or challenging yourself by going back to education, whatever it is. If things were handed to you on a silver platter, there wouldn't really be much avenues for you to grow as a person. You would be spoiled, right? And this isn't to say that God wants us to go through these hard struggles of a life so that he can prove to us that like, hey, we're strong. It's actually to give us opportunities to test our faith and to put our trust in him. And I think what God is trying to do with our lives is teach us to, to depend on him and show his goodness to us. But that doesn't come if we don't go through some challenging, situations that doesn't happen if we don't allow ourselves to have to go to God and be like hey I feel like I'm being stretched in this season I feel like I have to be patient I feel like I have to change I think I have to grow in this season because I'm waiting on something or I want to get more out of life or you know I want to be a better person I want to be a better believer whatever it is that requires us to be challenged and that is actually a bigger blessing than just the thing that you receive right to be able to have the testimony to be able to have built up your faith is a better um a better fruit of a season than just the fruit that you're seeking you know i have been through many seasons in my life or many challenges in my life where it's like i came out with more than just what i was praying for i came out a better person i came out with more faith and more resilience i came out of the situation knowing god more knowing him more intimately knowing him as the one who can answer my prayers and the one who can even sustain me and keep me and give me joy and peace even when i don't have the thing that i'm praying for yet knowing god in that way is a greater gift than what it is you are asking god to receive do you get what i'm saying it could also be that god is using your story to help not just you but other people as well I've been through some rubbish in this life. I've been through some tough times. Like, 
I'm talking about. I've seen childhood trauma. I have experienced depression. I have had suicide attempts. Like it's been tough. I've seen stuff happen with my family that make me think, huh, huh, why me? I don't want it. I don't need it. But as much as I'm asking God to do things for me, I've realized now, thank God for his preservation. Thank God that he actually kept me through a lot of those seasons. Um, and thank God I was able to get through those times. But I've realized that because of what I've went through, so many people are now blessed, right? And I'm not talking about, you know, being super altruistic and trust me, I am no saint. Um, and honestly, if somebody told me, girl, you could trade in the whole helping people for a perfect life, I might say bond the whole helping people. But I think that it's important to acknowledge that your story can really bless somebody. And the things that you learn along the way of your journey can help people who are coming behind you to navigate this terrain a lot easier. And sometimes that's what God is trying to do with your story. He's trying to give you a testimony. He's trying to give you some insight and some wisdom. He's trying to give you some experience with what other people are also going to struggle with. And he's going to give you the strength to get through it, whether that's the waiting season or the struggles of this period. Period, he's going to give you the strength to get through it so that you can lend a hand to other people and show them how to get through this season just like you did if not even faster than you did and I know we have this whole like god I don't want to be one of your strongest soldiers for 2023 trust me I'm right there with you I hear it but also there's something about purpose being linked to pain and purpose being linked to struggle and purpose being linked to our greatest discomfort that cannot be denied um and so maybe god is trying to do something in you with you for you um for other people before he actually gives you the thing that you're asking for the next tip i would give to anybody as well if they're feeling like a late bloomer is be more attached to the goal itself than you are to the deadline. Be more dedicated to the execution of your goals than you are when it happens. Um, for example, for the last couple of years, I have wanted to buy a house so bad, like so, so bad. And I've been saying it, I've been saying it, I saved for it, I did X, Y, Z, like talked to friends about it, went to serious, mul like multiple mortgage advisors about it. Like I was on this journey and this process and every time, something would happen. It just felt like this was not the right time for me to do it. And it frustrated the hell out of me because I have this very ambitious goal of being this young babe homeowner with like the dangling keys for the Instagram picture. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I want to do it too, you know? Um, and it was frustrating me that that happened, but as much as I was attached to, I had to let go of this attachment I had to the deadline. Why, and it was something my dad said to me, which was, you know, why are you so obsessed with buying a house before 25? You actually have nothing to prove to anybody. Your goal here is to actually buy a house. And I realized, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, I just want to buy a house. And as much as it may not be now, as much as it may not be in the next couple of years, it's going to be at some point. And that's because my desire is to see the execution of a greater principle in my life. So I know some people, like everyone has a different reason why they do what they do, right? And so I think understanding the reasons behind why people are doing certain things will help you to frame whether doing the thing is actually right for you. So for example, if somebody investing in a property at a young age is just a part of their investment strategy, because maybe, you know, that is one of their core business models, that makes more sense. But at the time I was running in an e-commerce business. I already had a major investment, you know? I already had something I was taking a risk on. I already had something which was drawing most of my resources. And so it didn't necessarily make sense for me because I already had my primary investment strategy. But other people, their primary investment strategy is stocks. Their primary investment strategy is property. And so it makes sense for them to be pursuing that first and therefore achieving it at an earlier age, if that makes sense. And it also made me realize that like my reasonings behind wanting to buy a house was yes, it's, it's an investment, but also I believe in ownership. But ownership doesn't have a deadline on it, right? Houses aren't going anywhere. They're getting more expensive. No denying it, no denying it. I'd be more better off buying a house now than I would later. But also no one knows the 
financial position I'll be in. Anyway, that's a whole conversation for another day about home ownership, X, Y, Z. However, what I'm trying to say is be more attached to the execution of the goal than you are the deadline. Just because it's not happening now doesn't mean it will never happen. Doesn't mean that you'll never get married. It doesn't mean that you will never, um, you know, get your dream career or get that promotion or get that degree. You're going to get it. It might not be when you initially thought it would be, but that's okay because why do you have to have achieved it by that age you know i know with like marriage and stuff the fear is well it might be too late for me to have children okay that's there are different ways to have children though but also i don't understand how you can be 24 and you're crying about this thing when the real like re the, the real menopause ain't that close basically menopause ain't that close to you um and i know the the risk of pregnancy is hugely increased the older you get especially once you get past 35 but girl what am i trying to say i have seen people meet and then get engaged and then get married within less than two years and then pop out a baby the following year three years and i know people will say but that's unrealistic it's not going to happen for the majority of people that's true i just said that a couple of minutes ago but it doesn't mean it's impossible it also doesn't mean that you should get yourself so worked up when time isn't really running out and i think that's another thing with this whole late bloomer conversation our deadlines are just warped like we think that time is closing in on us more than it actually is most of us are still young, especially if you're watching my channel. My biggest age range is between the age of 18 to 35. Most of y'all still have more than half of your lifetime ahead of you to achieve certain things, whether it be monetary goals, relational goals, financial goals, whatever it is. Why are we running? Why are we running? And so yes, my next tip is detach your self-worth from your external signs of progress. Now hear me out here. I think that having goals is important. Like I said, I'm ambitious. I love goal setting. I love meeting goals. I love having figures and stats and things to look at. As a businesswoman, that's what gets me going. However, I can't attach my self-worth to these numbers. It is dangerous to attach my self-worth to my relationship status, to my house size, to the car that I drive, to whatever, because these things can change at the drop of a hat. There are so many external circumstances which go into the external things we wanna see manifest in our lives. The promotion, our job title, our income, um, the amount of money we have in the bank, the value of our stocks and shares, like all of that is controlled by so many other things beyond our desire or our hard work. The stock market, the economic situation in your country, the environment, war your relationship status can change based on the behavior of somebody else the person you are in a relationship with the what your relationship looks like your relationship dynamic can change based on new opportunities which present themselves in your life you may not always be living your ideal or this you know romanticized idea that you have projected in your head um, for what your future relationship or career could look like and so if your self-worth and your self-value is so attached to that it's gonna crumble and shake at the drop of a hat or at any or any time the wind of change blows and the reason why i say that is self-worth is something which it shouldn't really alter too much. You are no less deserving of joy or happiness or love or acceptance in your life because your monetary status has changed, your income has changed, your relationship status has changed, or you know, you lost your house or you had to move back in with your mom or you had to go back to uni. Like nothing about your value and your worth as a person has changed because of that. Like the tag, drop that lie right here. I'm looking for a sharpener. Drop that lie right here and right now. You are still a valuable person. You are still somebody who deserves respect. You are still somebody who deserves to be cared for god still loves you you are not a failure you don't need to wear that title just because something in your life went wrong or simply because seasons changed or something unexpected or expected happened you know it's important to not have your your self-worth your intrinsic value wrapped up in all these things as for me and my house our value is wrapped up in what god has to say about us and last time i checked that bible ain't changed in a couple hundred years <laughs> that bible has not changed and so for me it's important to have my self-worth and my self-esteem rooted in something which doesn't change even if it's rooted 
outside of my own feelings, my own feelings about myself. Like what God says about me is important to me. And for me, that's what keeps me grounded. That's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me remembering that even in the face of failure, I can always go again, that my story hasn't ended. And so even when there is delay, even when there is um, something unexpected or there's challenge or there's obstacles, it's fine. I'm gonna get there at some point because God has made a promise to me. God has made promises concerning me. Where's my concealer? Yeah. And so no matter how long it takes, my feelings are gonna have to get in line with that fact. God's got my back um, and it doesn't change no matter what other people's opinions are maybe about me, whether people rate me or not, whether people think I'm cool or not, whether people think I've succeeded or not, that doesn't matter. People's opinions about you, let me tell you baby girl, people's opinions about you will change at the drop of an email. Literally at the drop of an email, people's opinion about you can change. One Instagram post, suddenly you've got a million friends. One um, viral something, something, suddenly everybody wants to be with you. One opportunity, suddenly people remember that they have your number. People's opinion about you will change, okay? So if you're doing this for that, it ain't, it ain't gonna work, it ain't gonna work. So if people's validation or approval of you is what's making you feel as though, or their lack of approval of you is what's making you feel as though I'm a late bloomer, I haven't achieved da, da 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 People's opinions are a dime a dozen, a dime a dozen. And I'm encouraged by the fact that somebody far greater and way more valuable has a greater opinion about me. And that encourages me. And so if anybody doesn't see an alignment with that, maybe they're just not my people. And so yeah, overall, as I finish the finishing touches of this base makeup, um, fear, being afraid to be a late bloomer, fear can only carry you so far, especially if you are trying to live the life you actually desire, right? Where, no matter what has happened to you, whether you have made the progress you wanted to see, whether you failed at something or, you know, maybe there's been a delay in your life or you're not as far as you want to, right now you're standing at the face of a choice. You can allow those things, whether true or untrue or, you know, whatever, that you're telling yourself, I haven't done this, I haven't done that, I haven't achieved this yet, all of these things are in my way, I lack this, I lack that, I've done this, I've done that. Uh, all of these things you're telling yourself, whether true or untrue, present you with a choice. You are now faced with whether you will allow fear to bully you into settling right here. Because no matter what, your age is going to get older. You can't, are you Benjamin Button? If you are, comment down below because I want to see it for myself. Uh, your age is, is going to increase, you're going to get older. And so you might as well choose to keep moving towards your goal. Even if you get there later than you wanted to, you're still going to get there unless you let fear stop you now. I'm just putting it out there. I'm just saying it because I'm sick of women being like, you know what, I'm too old for this. Why? Why? Especially if you haven't got kids yet. But even if you have got kids, my mum had two kids, she was in her 40s and still took herself back to uni. And so I do think that as much as we tell ourselves like, oh, it's just too late for me. I'll never get married. I'll never get my dream job. Why? Yes, it's unconventional. Is it ideal? Absolutely not. Do you want to do it? Probably not. Is it going to be draining? <laughs> not going to lie, probably, absolutely. These days, cost of living, everything is draining. But will you regret it if you don't do it? Yes. You'll regret it. You'll regret it. You'll always be kicking yourself. You'll always be telling yourself, if I had just started... It's like me with trying to lose weight, yeah? I've been trying to lose weight since I was probably 11. <laughs> If I took it, if I took it seriously, when I first had the like oomph, you know, when I first joined the gym when I was maybe 17, if I had just taken my gym journey seriously then, I would be a Gymshark athlete by now. I'm, I'm telling you, honest to God, I would, but I'm not. Why? Because I didn't start then. Because I thought it was too late. Other people are skinny already. I was always big, you know? And I hear it as much as we, you know, make excuses, which are, both valid and others are just excuses. We can still make a choice at that moment. And what, what I'm trying to get across, even in the midst of being a clown, is fear is not a good leader. It is one of the things that will hold you stagnant for a very, very, very long time. And what makes it even worse is with fear, there is nobody else to blame but you because you were the ones who you were the one who made the decision. 
even though you had all of these reasons like i said a lot of them being probably valid a lot of these fears being very much real um and as much as society is to blame for some of them your family might be to blame for some of them unexpected circumstance may be to blame for some of them the way life works is the onus is now on you to do something and I think with fear and faith, fear and faith can coexist. They really, really can. You can be scared as heck, but you can still be moving one foot in front of the other saying, God, I'm just trying to follow you. I'm just trying to have hope and faith that this future that I desire can actually come true. And as much as the, the road ahead looks very blurry to me, I'm still gonna have this faith that what I can't see could actually become real. And I'm gonna back that up with my action. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. And really and truly, as much as you may be scared of the unknown, faith says, I might not know, I might not see it, but I know it's there and I need to start working towards it. The future that I want is there somewhere. Even in the murkiness of my story, it is there somewhere. Even in the delay, it is there somewhere. I'm gonna start putting my steps to walk towards it. Sometimes I might stumble, sometimes I might fall, but I will not allow myself to forget. I will not allow myself to throw away the fact that it is there and I'm going for it. Call it delusion, call it whatever. I call it faith and it's gotten me this, this far. I'm gonna just put that out there, yeah. So my friend, I hope that me shouting at you today in my bathroom. <laughs> has been enjoyable i hope that um it has been helpful i'm literally just going to put on some mascara and some lip gloss and get to filming but genuinely i do hope that this video has been encouragement to you one of the beautiful things about youtube is you can always come back to this video it will be here and so if you ever find yourself falling back into that feeling of being scared that you're behind or being scared that maybe the life you want ain't gonna happen come back and listen to it i'm always gonna be here all right <laughs> so i will talk to you very very soon please leave your comments down below if you are somebody who has felt this before if you are somebody who's currently going through it maybe you just want to chime in some of your own wisdom and experiences we want to hear from you as always keep it loving keep it respectful keep it helpful and i'm trying to look for lip gloss because my lip gloss is popping i really do hope that this video was helpful and i'll talk to you very very soon on my channel make sure that you are subscribed turn on your notifications don't ever miss a video from me i'll talk to you soon and as always stay beautiful and stay blessed Mwah.